Dr. Robert M. Gagné, August 21, 1916 to April 28, 2002. Here are some quick facts on the good doctor. He earned his bachelor's degree in Yale in 1937 and his Ph.D. in Brown in 1940. He's the author of over 100 articles and several books, including Essentials of Learning for Instruction in 1974 and The Conditions of Learning in 1979, while at UC Berkeley. He was drafted into the Army Air Corps during World War II, where he worked with Arthur Melton, James Gibson, and Paul Fitz all renowned psychologists, on air crew classification and psychomotor tests. After the war, he joined the Air Force Personnel and Training Research Center, and he finished his career at the Department of Educational Research, Florida State University. Gagné believed there were five types of learning outcomes, verbal information, which was declarative language and organized knowledge, intellectual skills, procedural skills, concepts, rules, and problem solvings, cognitive strategies, or a student's personal way to learn, think, guide, and act, attitude, an internal state which includes emotions and which influences behavior, and motor skills, which are physical skills which, when done with smoothness and timing, equate to the level of a motor skill. He also believed in a hierarchy of learning, going from the lowest level, or signal learning, to stimulus response, to chaining, to verbal association, to discrimination learning, to concept learning, to rule learning, to problem solving. But what exactly does that all mean? Signal learning is the simplest form of learning and is, simpler, and is similar to Pavlov's classical conditioning. Dogs salivate when they hear a bell and we withdraw hand when touching a hot object. These are both examples of signal learning. Stimulus response learning is the second level of learning. Skinner's operant conditioning falls within this realm, and it is precise responses to specific stimuli. Physical movement, animal training, and language acquisition fall within this realm, such as a toddler learning mama or a dog learning to mind on a leash. Chaining is the third level of learning, and it is a complex motor skills. It is a linked sequence of stimulus and response, such as riding a bike or playing the piano. The fourth level of learning is verbal associations. Language development skills, which are a key process to any learning, and verbal units, or chunking, are an integral part of this form of learning. Um, and it ranges from the simplest naming object to translation responses or context clues. For instance, train or train, two di same word, two different connotations. Discrimination learning is the fifth level of learning. It's within a system, an appropriate response to similar stimuli, even with interference. A good example of this is children or teacher learning children's names. Concept learning is the sixth level of learning and it is a consistent response to different stimuli within a common class or category. It is our ability to generalize and classify. For instance, in this image over here we have living things, which leads to plants and grass, or animals, dogs, or cows carnivores, or herbivores. Rule learning is the seventh level of learning, and it is learning relationships between concepts to apply them to new and different situations. For instance, if I know the information on the previous slide, I should be able, given sufficient information, to categorize these new animals. Living things, carnivores, wolf, crocodile, lion, living things, herbivores, cow, giraffe, elephant, living things, omnivores, man, and monkey. Problem solving is the highest level of learning, and it's when you can invent a complex rule and then apply it to similar problems. To do this, you need prerequisite knowledge. A good example of this is, I'm a good cook, and so I know that I can substitute an apple for egg to make a cake. I can then apply this if I need to make cookies and have no eggs, to use an apple as the rising agent to make a cookie. Nine events of instruction. 
Gagne's nine events of instruction, that is, are to gain attention, to inform the learner of objectives, to stimulate recall of prior learning, to present content, to provide learning guidance, to elicit performance, to provide feedback, to assess performance, to enhance retention and transfer. Gaining attention. For ADA and compliancy rules, it's best to use headers for emphasis and to use alt tags for your images. An interesting fact, quote, or story is a good way to gain attention as well as gamifying your course. Asking questions after posing a dilemma or an interactive component such as streaming audio or video. The second level is to inform learners of objectives. To do this, we describe the learning outcomes. We have no more than one to three learning outcomes, and we give a detailed but short explanation of each learning outcome of no more than one or two sentences. We then provide performance measures, rubrics, checklists, and discussions. The third one is stimulate recall of prior learning. During this phase, we review previous material with a video, a short lecture, or a group discussion. We also provide a bridge or previous material linked to new material. And we can provide a pre-assessment that is going to show us where our students are located before we begin our teaching. The next step is to present content. We can do this using text and pictures, which is more likely to be ADA compliant and to work better with lower bandwidth and older equipment computers, but it is less engaging. Or we can use audio and video, which requires closed captioning to be ADA compliant and also requires higher bandwidth and better equipment, but is a far more engaging medium. We can provide learning guidance in our next phase, which is to answer questions and to provide supplemental material such as study guides, guidelines, checklists, rubrics, and the deadline for the assignment. We can then elicit performance. We can practice with no weight, low weight credit, or extra credit assignments, quizzes, homeworks, draft papers, gamifying our course again, discussion at the group or the classroom level. We then move on to providing feedback to that ungraded or extra credit discussion or assessment in either a peer-to-peer, -peer, tutorial, instructor, or automated format. We now are up to assessing the performance, and we do that with a high point value assignment, which consists of a portfolio, a project, or an objective essay or combination final or some other means determined by the instructor. Finally, we enhance retention and transfer. To do this, we use the instructor can provide a learning review or apply the learning to a new situation in preparation for a new unit. While students can evaluate the learning of the unit, reflect on what they've learned, and apply the learning to a new situation. The references for this to presentation are Gagne's Nine Events of Instruction, Jones A, Five Types of Learning, Myra Maha Ma Ishwari VK, Gagne's Hierarchy of Learning Types, Rothkopf EZ, In Appreciation, Robert Mills, Gagne, and Spectre JM, Foundations of Educational Technology, Integration, Integrative Approaches, and Interdisciplinary Practices. Does anyone have any questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.